people had a wonderful week and we have this amazing weather still. I'm so grateful that we have this great weather. It reminds me we're lucky to live here. And um, I do want to give my regards to a very dear friend's husband who passed away a week ago. And I had the same feelings I had like Princess Diane, that person should not die. He gave so much back. And um, it just reminds me though of, you know, you know, what's, what's our legacy? Um, what, what are we creating to leave in this world? And this man left so much love, knowledge, care, and um, it's very, it's not right. He should be gone. He was 73. He had so much more to give. And I just want to send my love to Sandy this morning, his beautiful wife and his family. But moving on, and um, I just, um, again, it reminds me of life is short, make each day count. And today, you know, it's a little more informal, um, our Friday morning chat. I have our lovely Geraldine again today. <laughs> and Geraldine and I have a lot of fun and uh, she keeps me very um, up-spirited and young and spunky <laughs> and fast thinking. And boy, you know, it keeps me going in this business. Uh, but, you know, one of the things we were talking about the other day is Geraldine's incredible with developers are looking at land values, um, things like that. And what I wanted to talk about was, um, you know, who is buying land right now? And Geraldine's going to um, help us with that talk. Um, so Geraldine, why don't you go ahead and start off and let us know a bit about who's buying land right now. Okay, yes, and my answer includes peace. I'm closing Doug's door because he's busy on the phone, everyone. Okay, we'll wait for that. <laughs> Okay. Now we can hear ourselves. <laughs> See, this is very live. This is how we operate in this office. But yeah, so now who's buying land, Geraldine? Okay, I'll go over that. And also these are transactions I've been also part of. So we yeah. have various people or groups by land or families. So one, one who is looking to build their dream home. Number one, two, farmers looking yeah. for land for farming. Three, we have uh, small scale developers or big developers that look for land to be able to rebuild, whether it's like an apartment zoning where they can build a high rise or multiple homes on one lot or even just build one house. Wow. And, you know, and of course, you know, we look at Oahu being so um, congested and so big sometimes. I mean, are there actually, is there actually land available out there? Yes. So how, how do you, I mean, when I think of land, I think, oh my God, there's no land, but there really is when you start looking. Yes, there is. Uh, you can also, besides just looking at raw land, we also look at teardowns. Teardowns, okay. And I know you had sold a um, property in Manoa a few months ago and the house was definitely a teardown. Maybe you can explain, sometimes it's best, you know, for loan purposes and for building permit pur purposes, you may want to already have a home you know a tear down home on the lot and maybe you can go into a little detail on that yeah sometimes the financing that lenders are offering is better than raw land because for raw land if you're looking for raw land there is programs available so there's one to three years for and you got to put 25 to 35 sometimes 40 percent down payment and you would have to gear into a construction loan after. Within three years. Correct. And then if you have an existing home on the property, you can just do a normal residential mortgage. Correct. But then, of course, I ask, can you get a mortgage if the house is a teardown? Every situation is different. <laughs> <laughs> That's where we have trusted vendors and we know which mortgage broker to go to yes. depending on the property, right? Yes. <laughs> There's no fixed rule in Hawaii, and I mean in real estate. And I think that's why I love what we do because it's always different. Everything's different. And after over 30 years doing this and helping many people, um, it's still mind-boggling some of the things we have to put together wouldn't you say? Yes. And I know you mentioned about the farmers. So that's kind of exciting because, you know, everyone's into sustainability and, and growing their own food. And maybe you can give me an example of areas where people would look for if they wanted to be, um, what do they call it, a gentleman farmer or something? Yeah, so various areas such as Kanyohe, Waimanalo, uh, and also out on the Waianae coast, there is still a good amount of land for 
farmers or agriculture. Wow. Yeah. And I know we have a client currently right now and they're from, um, they were living in Japan and they're looking actually, to, you know, to have a lovely family home for their, uh, for their children, but they also want land to grow things on. So those areas would be um, top choices also that, you know, green lushness that they want versus the rural urban right in Honolulu, of course. And, you know, let's talk about some land in Honolulu now that I've touched on that, you know, you know, if somebody's looking in the Macaulay area or downtown or some commercial zoning land, what, what are they, what kind of people are looking for properties like that right now? Investors or developers. Correct, investors, developers, or owner use even. You know, sometimes, you know, it's got so expensive um, office space that people start um, looking at buildings they can build themselves um, on some of this land. And I, I noticed a property the other day in Punchbowl that was 20,000 square feet. And it said it could, um, it was R5 zoning. And it, was, it said it could build five units, which I question because usually that would be four units. You'd have to check that, of course. And, you know, that kind of might be a little apartment building, for instance. You know, I know our housing market, you know, it's very hard for people to find rentals as well. And people are building uh, rental buildings, for example, correct? Yes. Uh, let's talk about you know, one of the problems is visualization. You know, you, bring, you take a client um, out to a vacant lot and it's very hard to say, well, how does one build on this lot? So how would you go about that journey? And you, you want to show a client a lot and you think it's the ideal lot, but it, it might be a very steep lot or very irregular. How do you sort of help with the visualization process? Well, number one, we have to check with timeline with the client we really have to communicate with them to see what their goals are. And they might have a specific timeline, but we can say that's pretty unrealistic with the yeah. timeline given because there's a whole process. And also raw land could mean no infrastructure, no water connection, no electricity yeah. connection. So a lot of things that we have to factor in for timeline. And maybe you can give an example of how hard we really do work for our clients when we're dealing with um, not your normal single family home on a lot and, you know, sales. This is what we really do also specialize here. Geraldine and Doug are both amazing with properties when they get a little more complicated. And maybe you can talk about the sewer, the cesspool. Remember the Manoa property? Oh, it didn't yeah. have a, I don't think it had a sewer a cesspool connection and the people were borrowing off their neighbor, right? So yes. why don't you ex maybe go into a little briefing on that, what you have to be careful about? Yes, yeah, so sewer connection, checking if there is, if possibility there is, so that's part of the due diligence. So asking even enough due diligence time during the period and making sure you get the answers yeah. or need to ask for an extension for the due diligence period, that's really important. Yeah, you, you really have to be quite educated as a realtor or know what, where your resources are when you're selling vacant land and especially vacant land that's maybe not sewer connected, et cetera. And also oceanfront lots right now. Now we have our oceanfront properties um, actually having the issue with erosion, et cetera. And, you know, knowing the experts to come out and look at the land and make comments on if they feel it's safe or what to expect the next 10 or 20 years, et cetera. Uh, the other um, really important thing is um, maybe get an architect out to the vacant lot. We have an architect that goes out to the vacant lot with us, correct? Yes. Um, they can pretty much look at what could be built on the lot. So a lot of due diligence does happen with the buyers who are looking. Um, other buyers who are looking, uh, maybe people, they just can't find what they want. I mean, and they have the time to build a house. Do you run into a few people like that? Oh, yes, all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, houses are relatively, they've gone up a lot, right? And construction costs are still quite expensive, but I believe they went down a little bit from the other month. The other month, of course, we had the, um, the wood increase in prices, and I believe that's gone down a little bit now. Correct, yes. Yeah, so it's uh, most people are looking for big lots. Um, they can be found. When, when I say large, there's about 20,000 square feet. And why don't we uh, talk about some pricing? You know, what does it cost to buy a vacant lot? Let's, let's give some examples, for instance, what we're well, seeing. Probably 
feature some properties we'll feature <laughs> that's available. Bunch, that's, <laughs> so we're going to feature our listing <laughs> up in Monolani Heights, and that's listed at 1.1 million. And it's, uh, I believe it's over 20,000 square feet, right? And when you first come to it, you think, whoa, how do I build? But it has the most amazing view, a 180 uh, degree view of um, Honolulu. And if you build a modern home on that, I think it'd be gorgeous. And there was even some renderings of an um, infinity pool, which was pretty wild. Um, there's another lot up in Manalani Heights that's listed for 1.2 million. And it's in a new development, um, more CPR. My concern with that is there's trees that belong to an association um, in front of it. So you have to be really careful if, if that's going to ruin the view plan or not. But of course, and we have a client who was looking at that. The next uh, step would be to go and talk to the um, lister and then from there um, go to our vendors who could maybe give their opinion. Um, but Geraldine, why don't you say a few others that are Yeah, listed? there's a property and feel free to call us at our office 808-593-9826 and ask for Karan or myself. We There's a property out in Kaneohe right under 600,000 on 20,000 square feet, a little over 20,000 square foot lot. That would have, it would be a view home also. View home Yeah, also. on a residential lot. Really? Yes, yes that's amazing. And how big was that lot? Uh, about 22,000 square feet. Wow, I think I want to go out there and see that. That's very reasonable. Yeah, we should take a look at yeah, it. Yeah, we should take a look at that. Because again, we want to know the inventory, but you know, feel free to give us a call. Um, you know, every day, uh, new property, new land comes up. And we can analyze each lot and see if it's something that would uh, fit what you're looking for. So moving on, we have Marianne's photos, and thanks, Geraldine, oh, for today. You're yeah, um, we, we we just came across this this week because we were talking about land. I said, oh, let's share this with our audience on Friday. So really fun. Um, so Marianne's photos are all about being grateful every day because, of course, Thanksgiving now is only um, two weeks away, and this is where we come in and we really feel. You know what what are we grateful for and you know just to remind everybody please drop off any uh food goods or cans of foods to our office at 355 harding avenue we have a push on the food drive this month and um i thank everyone who's uh contributed to that it's now seven years we've been doing that seven years so it goes quick you know the photos this um this friday is you know water she says a vital resource that all our life depends on so let's be grateful for the water that we um experience and bamboo forests sustainable renewable and one of the most used building materials because of its strength and lightness and its weight and then being thankful uh, for the fish <laughs> a food source I don't think I'd want to eat that little fish. It's too pretty. <laughs> and contributors of nutrients to marine ecosystems and sun. It's so important for us to get, we, we have all these beautiful um, resources here. Remember, get out and enjoy the outdoors. This morning I went for a walk and it just, it just brings you to life to start your day. That's so beautiful. Isn't that beautiful? beautiful? Yeah. Thanks, Marianne. Thanks, Marianne, again. And um, much uh, mahalo and have a wonderful weekend and we'll be seeing you next week. Aloha.